Hello friends, I am Monica Singla, assistant professor in IT department on the behalf of Biani group of colleges today delivering lecture on the topic of linked list. Friends, linked list, what is the linked list? To understand the concept of linked list, we first have to know what's, why this concept came into use. In case of uh, before that, there was a uh, data structure that is an array. Then array is also linear collection of elements. In case of array, we can store all the elements in a contiguous memory location. If we have an array of 10 elements, A10, we, name of our array is A and we can store 10 elements in this array. Suppose if I want to store 11th element in this array, then it's not possible because we have to allocate it memory location only for 10 elements. In this case, the size of array is fixed. That is the main problem with the array. The next problem with array is that the insertion, if I want to insert a new element, then that is very expensive with array. Then suppose to understand this concept, we can take one more example. Take one more example. Suppose I have an array of IDs, array name is ID in which we store the ID of three student. We have a ID of three student. Now suppose I want to insert a new element. I want to insert new element whose value, whose ID is 1005. And I want that ID should be stored in sorted order. It means I want to store ID on this place. Then problem is that if I want to insert element on this location, I have to shift it all these two elements downside. Then it will take too much time. Then in, that's why an insertion in case of array is very expensive. To remove this problem, the concept of linked list came into use. What is a linked list now? We have to understand this. Now what is a linked list? If we understand what is a linked list, then we can understand how linked list cover the disadvantage of the array. Then in case of linked list, we have a collection of linear nodes. What is a node? Actually node is divided into two parts. First is a data part and next is a link part. Then data part store the information of our element and link store the pointer or address of the next element. We can understand this and we have also start pointer which store the address of the first element. And in case of link list, the last node store the null element. This is a null. The null we can show through the cross sign. The null we use to show the our link list is stop here. To understand the concept of link list, we can take example of a uh, numerical items. We have suppose list of items. Now we can how we can present this list through the link list. See, first we store 8 in the info part. The address of this node we will store in the start. And next element we will store after that next and then last one. Because our list is stopped here, that's why we will use null pointer in this case here. We can discuss the what's the advantage of linked list. The first one is that linked list is a dynamic size. We can insert as many elements as we required in the linked list directly. Because in memory, data is scattered. In case of memory, data is scattered in the separate places because it may be possible this cell of memory is occupied and this is empty. Then through the linked list, we can store the element at different location and 
one element is here, second one is on this position and third one is here and we can attach all that elements through the pointer. That is the, the advantage of link list. The next one is the insertion is easy in case of link list because we can add as many element as we want in the link list. The next one is how now we will discuss how we can represent in the link list to the sir how we can represent to the link list in the memory. The next topic is representation of link list in memory. Let to represent the link list, let we take list as a link list. Suppose we have a list and we have a two arrays info and link. These are arrays. info and link and start store the location of first element. We have a li list of these elements. Suppose we have a list of these elements. Suppose our first element 8 is stored inside memory on the second on the second position. Then star will store the address of the first. I have already told you before that because star store the address of first element that is why we will because 8 is stored here in the on the second memory location then it will store 2. It will point to the 2 and on the two lo second location we will store 8 and corresponding to that we have one more array link array. In this we will store the address of next element. Suppose next element is 10 and it is stored on a fourth. Then link will store the address of 10 that is a 4. That is why link will store the 4. And the next element is stored on the fourth location and the link part will store the address of third element. Suppose third element is stored on the first location 12. That is why link will store now 1 and because here our list is end that is why we will place null pointer here. That is now we can see how link list is represented in memory. Sir, do we discuss what operation we can perform on a link list. The first operation which we can perform that is a traversing. Next one is a searching an element and how we can insert an element on the separate position in a linked list and how we can delete an element from the link list. First we will discuss here traversing. What is a traversing? What is a traversing? In case of traversing we try to assess each element in a link list and try to perform on uh, op any kind of operation such as a sum and uh, we can write that information in a link list by using traversing. Then what is the algorithm of traversing? We will understand this algorithm through an example. Suppose we have an element PTR which store the location of a start element. Because for this we take one example, one more example. Yeah.
this is a start this null now in the ptr variable we have stored the value of start it means now we have we are on the first element a and we will repeat all these steps Now we will start from here and we will st repeat the further steps until we reach to the null. Then next in the next step we will apply process, apply process on info ptr. In the ptr we have stored the value of start and then in the st start we will take first node then info ptr will store a then in case we try apply process on info ptr here process can be anything if we take numerical values in this case the uh, process can be a sum of elements and process can in this case because we are taking any alphabetic values that's why the process can be a in this case we can write the value of a we can also say write a write info ptr the next step because we have processed this element now we want to go to the next element for this purpose we will increase the value of the ptr inside the ptr we will store the value of next element for this purpose we have to increase the ptr value then now ptr and link ptr because before that we were on a in the next step we will go to the link of a that is a b now ptr will store the value of next element that is a b now after that we can exit or in this way every time value of pt link we, we will increase the value of link and go to the next step and finally after the next step we will reach here b and every time pti value will increase we go to the process, process to the next node and next time we will process to the c in this way the traversing algorithm will work thank you